Greetings everyone, this is Ashton with Muse Themes. I can't wait to share with you guys today's newest release, our Audio Essentials widget. In a continuation of our Essentials widget series, we have a beautiful and wonderfully functional audio player from Muse, and I'm super excited about this one. This widget is as versatile and functional as it is simple to use, and gives a great variety in types of looks, sizes, and complexity with which you can use it. On our live demo here, you can see we have a variety of different appearances from dark to light, wide to compact, descriptive and minimal, any of which I can easily click a button to play and pause our tracks. And it's complemented with some awesome styling, imagery, and external linking, all of which are completely customizable. Now we have a pretty cool, unique setup for this widget, which I'll dive into deeper once we get into Muse. But when you download this widget, you're gonna notice that we've included two completely separate versions of the widget. We have an essential version and a pro version. Our essential version, which we have an example of it here on the bottom of our demo, this is a version ideal for anyone looking for a very straightforward options panel and an easy setup. It's built with the same player as the pro version, but it's just omitting the more complex features, so you can simply drop it on your page and go. This version will always remain simple, and as we continue to develop and update this widget with future requests from members, those will be included on the pro version in an effort to keep this one very light and clean. Our pro version is much more tricked out, and it includes just about every cool feature that we could think of. All of these other options here on our live demo are examples of the pro version in action, and as you can see, there are many more options, and it's overall much more powerful. You can include cover photos on the player, which is great for including any album art or promotional imagery, and each song can have its own image, which is cool. You can include a playlist of your songs, as demoed by these first examples up here. There are four pre-styled layouts for you to play with, and of course a hyperlink you can customize here to direct your users to a URL of your choosing. And we're going to continue this model of multifaceted widget structure like this Essential versus Pro version included here whenever it's properly suited for our future widgets, and we think it's really going to allow for much more malleable products in the end. So let's jump into Muse and we're going to take a look at what we're working with. Once we import the widget into the panel, you can click the drop down here and see both our Essential and Pro versions ready to go. I'm going to spend a little bit more time with the Pro version, but let's first run through the Essential version really quick. So I'll drag it out onto the page, and you're just going to get this rather small horizontal placeholder. And like I said, this version is kept very bare bones, so you can literally just drop this and go. Basically all you're going to get is a play button and a progress bar with this one. And we felt that if you wanted to style it up, you could do so with the other elements on your Muse site, like rectangles or text boxes. And this version basically will blend right in with just about any layout. Now you can feel free to adjust the width of this placeholder as you wish. The sizing of this box is going to represent the width of your progress bar that you'll see in the browser. And inside the settings panel, very straightforward. First you're going to select your audio source, which you can select from local file or external. External is only for audio files that are currently hosted on another web server somewhere, in which you'd need the direct URL to the actual mp3 file. And the link has to end with .mp3. This isn't just a regular browser URL, but rather a direct link to a hosted file. However, most users are probably going to want to use the local version, which allows you to upload a file directly from your computer, which I'll go ahead and do now. I have a few songs ready to go here. I'm going to grab um, Old Gold. There we go. Down here, skin style, light or dark, very simple. Since my background is white right now, we'll go ahead and with the dark so we can see it better. And of course your play bar color and size are adjustable here. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this a quick browser preview. And you can see here, as promised, just a basic play button and progress bar and was set up in mere seconds. So this is a pretty awesome place to start. But now I'm going to go ahead and jump back into Muse and I'm going to spend a little bit more time in our pro version since there's a lot more to cover there. I'm going to go ahead and delete our essential version and we'll drag out a pro. And right off the bat, you're going to see we get a much bigger version by default. And we'll go ahead and center this on the page. Now let's dive into this options panel here. First option to select is the layout. And as I mentioned, we have four different versions for you to choose from. We have wide, standard, compact, and simple. All of which are displayed on our live demo in case you want to reference it over here. Another cool element is that when you load multiple tracks into this widget, it will still function as a playlist, even on the compact and simple layouts we have here on the bottom. Even though the playlist isn't showing on these, the playlist will still be functional and you can advance through the songs just like normal. So back to the panel, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the standard layout for right now. And we'll leave it with the dark skin style so it'll show up against our white background. 
This next option here is our cover image fitting style. And I'm gonna come back to this in a moment because it's gonna come into play when we're uploading our media. But first things first, you have a full selection here to enable or disable certain controls for your user with these checkboxes. These playlist icon and playlist shadow options only apply if you're using the compact layout of this widget where your playlist wouldn't actually be fully visible. And down here you have the option to show cover image and background image. And if I reference the live demo once again, let's say our first wide player up here, for example, you have the cover image featured here on the left, and it's also shown again as a background image here placed subtly behind everything, which is really cool. So jumping back to the settings panel, I'm gonna go ahead and leave both of those intact for now. Now for some styling, we can go ahead and click this drop down. Playlist height. This setting basically applies a maximum height setting for your playlist. So when the playlist goes beyond that specified height, it will apply a scroll bar. So this setting can be really handy for players that might have a long playlist, but might also be on a page without a ton of room. Now your main accent color here, this is gonna to apply to certain things like the active track in the playlist or certain enabled settings, like when the user toggles things like shuffle or repeat. Now I won't go into each one of these in painstaking detail, but a couple important things to note. When choosing your font family, this is a global setting for all text in the widget. However, each type of text has its own sizing options, as you can see here with the title text, subtitle text, and the info text. Down here, this info text will only be seen on layouts where the playlist is always present, like in the standard and wide formats. And lastly, down here, you have an option to allow users to download your track with this checkbox if you choose. Now, finally, for the audio loader, I'm gonna jump into audio setup one through five. Now, when you expand this, they all come default as disabled at first, so make sure to only enable the ones that you're actually going to use. And as I mentioned before, you can choose from a local file or external link. I'll go ahead and stick with local file for right now. And we can click add file to upload my first track. And here I have a few tracks from our product manager, Brandon Wallace. This is his band, Ola Sweet. So I'll go ahead and grab the first track, Strange Lately. Our cover image, I also have some album art here I'll upload as well. And now let's enter some info for our track. So for title, I can just simply put the song title, which is Strange Lately. For subtitle, I'll put the name of the EP, which is Santiago. And for the URL, we'll set it to go directly to the band site, which in this case is olasuite.com. Now, just so we can see our playlist in action, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more songs, and I'll just do them simultaneously here. We have our second file I'll pull called Old Gold. And our third one here, I have Big Sleep. I'll go ahead and use the same cover image for all three since we're working off the same album. Song names, we have Old Gold and Big Sleep. And then we'll go ahead and copy the subtitle we used before as well as our link info. Great, okay, now the last thing I wanna do is go over to the cover image fitting style, which I skipped over a minute ago. You have two options for how to display your cover images. We have adaptive and fixed size. Adaptive mode is basically going to adapt your image to the sizing that you've set for your player. And the player icons will display based on the size of your image. So let me show you what that looks like by previewing our player as it is now. Great, this is actually already looking really good. We have our titles and subtitles displaying, our more info links functioning, if I click it here. And we'll go ahead and jump back. I can hit play and hear our first song. Go and pause that. Now take a look here at our cover photo. Now the widget has used the photo in such a way that adapts it to the width that you've set for the player. And everything beneath it, these player icons, the playlist, etc., these are all placed beneath the photo as it appears. This is the option you'll likely want to use if you're using cover photos of all the same size. If you use this adaptive setting with photos of different sizes, you're gonna find that these player icons and such are gonna shift their positioning between songs, since the player is basically adapting to the size of the photo. 
If you have images of differing sizes and you don't want to resize them all to match, then what you're going to want to do is use the other option in the panel, and that's fixed size. Now when selecting this, you're going to be prompted here to designate the maximum height and width that will be dedicated to the cover photo. So that way your player functions will remain consistent in their positioning. So just to compare, the image I'm using now is a square, so I could set the max height and width to 300 pixels each. And if we preview that in the browser, you can see now that the widget is constraining our image into our preset size, and it will do so with all images. So these setting options will depend on your variety and sizing of each of your cover photos, but ultimately just experiment it and you'll find out what's best for your player. So that's it, folks. I think we've covered just about everything. This is an awesome development for our library that we think is going to continue our Essentials Widgets series in a really strong way. And as always, we hope you enjoy. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.